Welcome to Wine at Nine, our weekly wine night discussion. We are your hosts. I'm Jen with Jerry Joseph and KG. Hey, hey. Our wines for this particular show? <laughs> Second Voyage. Second Voyage, which is a... <laughs> We got a second voyage, a red blend. Campo Viejo, Rioja. That's Spanish, bottom of Spain, right? Mm-hmm. That's a Spanish wine. That's what's up. Imported into New York. Yeah. Mine's a South, mine is a South Australian wine. Nice. Yeah. And for me, the Quail Oak. Uh, Cab, Camillo, so well. Facts. Cool. I got you. And as far as our topics today? <laughs> What I know, right? So, those are our wines for the night. Oh, yeah, God. let's um, we're gonna toast, we're gonna toast right now. And today, uh, we have our very special guest, Joy, who's actually one of my longest standing friends of my life. Fun fact. So, Joy, why don't you uh, let us know what we're gonna be toasting to tonight? All right, so we're gonna toast to glowing up in 2021. All right, glowing up 2021. Glowing up. It's the glow up year. Yeah. Years. Twenty twenty was not was not the year for me for that. <laughs> so. Heard. <laughs> Heard. <laughs> mm, all right. This. This you know this is a wonderful blend. I think I'm liking more red blends than specific you know like. Cabs or Pinot Noirs, Merlots. I'm getting a lot more characteristics from red blends lately, and this one is great. It is. It's sharp. With it's sharp. It has sharp flavor to it, but not too much. It's very fruit forward. I'm tasting. I, it's weird that I actually say this, but I can actually taste like like the dark cherries or maybe the blackberry that's in it. Um, this is a date night wine. Normally, I don't, I, I don't, when I picture myself drinking wine, I don't typically think of myself with a meal, but I feel like this is definitely something I would drink um, while I'm having a meal with someone and, you know, just having great conversation. This is, yeah, this is a, this is a date night wine. That's where I see myself with this one. Tannins are kind of medium, not too sharp, but the flavor is sharp. Not medium, but the yeah. flavor is good. That's what's up, man. Mm-hmm. I poured this and I was like, dude, I saw the color. I was like, excellent, man. It it does punch me, to be honest. Tan is a pretty low, but like the scent, I smelled that. I was like, yo, good stuff, man. It, the flavors are pretty high. The oakiness definitely uh, pops out. It's If I had to rank it, I'd probably go about like, honestly, like a three. This gets mm-hmm. a three, man. Yeah. Y'all are going to enjoy it. I'm looking forward to tasting that one. Yeah. This one's really good, too. This is pretty dry. Um, this would go good paired with, with a ribeye, um, with some asparagus, some rice. Because of the marbling? The yeah, ribeye? yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, ribeyes are the best, best cut of steak. That you can <laughs> Arguably. We get, it, we get it medium rare, nothing else. Medium rare New York strip for me. Oh, uh, strips are good as well. But they're not as good as ribeyes. Ribeyes are way more flavorful. Facts. What are we talking about tonight? So tonight we're actually going to be talking about careers. You know, um, different careers that we've had, what we uh, different careers that we actually like or that we that we find fascinating. Things that we do in a different timeline. Just pretty much anything that pertains to careers. And uh, luckily, again this week we have the lovely Katie Boatwright to. To guide us along. Say hello, Katie. Hello. Hey. So, yeah. Let's uh, let's go ahead and kick off this conversation. Kick off this wine night. Okay, so what are some jobs that we find fascinating? Mm. I can't think of too many jobs that I don't find fascinating, you know? Okay. Like, there's... You have your general manual labor kind of stuff that isn't fascinating. Like if you're working on like some kind of assembly line or in a warehouse or something like that, that's not too entertain. That's not too fascinating to me. But really, anything that you can be creative with, or I mean, I, I love learning things. So when I when I learn about other people's jobs, it's it's 
I, I do get fascinated. You know, I watched, I went down a rabbit hole on YouTube not too long ago, and I watched two and a half, three hours of these people that detail cars. And in these uh, videos, they went through and they found like the dirtiest, nastiest car, <laughs> you know? And seeing every step that they go through and how passionate they are about just cleaning a car, it, it just, it just sucks. It's a craft. It's a craft. Yeah. 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 People love um, cleaning things up and making them brand new. So one job that I find very interesting, or not interesting, but just creative and fun, uh, is a lot of it's like what you see on the like HGTV, where people buy like these seventy thousand dollar houses, sometimes cheaper. And then they renovate them, they gut them, rebuild them on the inside out, and they decorate them to be something that can turn into really, depending on location, like a half million dollar home. And I think that that's one thing that a lot of people enjoy is being creative and doing interior design along with you know real rebuilding homes. So. Uh, yeah, I think the whole before and after is mm -hmm. always. I mean, whether it's weight loss, body transformation, or you know, a home renovation, car cleaning, before and afters are just astonishing. Mm -hmm. I agree. That's wild, man. But I can see the difference, though. Like, with something like, with something where you have to apply your own personal creativity, that's one thing. But, like, if, like the weight loss thing, that's sheer will. And I have, I have the utmost respect for that. Probably even more so, to be honest, because it's easy to do something when you enjoy doing it or you're good at it. But to do something to where you have to harness your own discipline, that's entirely different. Most people aren't bred that way, and I love that. You have to have discipline to be good at doing something, even if you do love it. Uh, that I disagree with. Creatives are born. They are born, man. Yeah, but art isn't... So the way, the way I look at art, art is... Art comes from the person creating it. It comes from the person appreciating it. And then it can also come from both. There can be someone that just does something really well. That don't they don't put their heart and soul into it, and that's it, it can be viewed as art. You know, like you see these um, these videos of street performers, not really street performers, but I guess like street food vendors and the way that they they might cook something really fast, or they might do a particular thing in a certain way that took them a lot of skill, and they may they may look at it as just a job. But to someone else, they look at that time and that commitment, and they look at it as, as art. So I don't know. It's it's the whole the art the whole art thing of it, of any job. I think is fascinating to me, and it, it, art can be viewed from different angles. Is what I'm saying. I can get that. I get that. Um, I think a fascinating job, um, like I've always said, is marine biology, studying animals or uh, fish in the sea. Um, there's a lot of fascinating things in the ocean, and it's just <coughs> endless. So there's always new There's so things. many species that haven't even been discovered yeah. to this day. That's so crazy. So that's, yeah. that's an interesting thing. Um, I've always been envious of the divers that are brave enough to <laughs> dive in the ocean and, and be surrounded by such a infinite, infinite space. And to have all of the, all of the possibilities that there are beneath the surface. It's super scary. Yeah, it's, it is. Well, wait until okay. space or exploration becomes more of the norm. You know, like for real, man. Like, I've always been had an affinity for the cosmos, man. So it's like my thing is anything that pertains to outside of Earth has I've always loved even that much more, man. Like I. Mm -hmm astronauts I mean and that's going to become more like as technology increases that's going to be even way more like you know the norm and I, I look forward to that day I look forward to the day where they're like hey like you know we discover life on you know what I mean like it's gonna make me you know so I guess I say all that actually I meant to say something about what you said um to pick it back on what you said basically bravery that's a major component and in, in particular careers that I might admire like as we were talking about earlier like with Valor and there's something more that goes into any career where you consistently put your life on the line I have the utmost respect for it man people do not understand it so like it takes a certain type police, of beast firefighters all of them yeah. all of them man 
because to be honest, they are the they are the anchor. You know what I mean? It's what we do. But I think it's, that if a lot more people had that same respect for law enforcement and for military, things in the world would be a lot different. I think that our military soldiers would would find peace when they come home. I think that you know firefighters and policemen could could live a little bit more of a sound life. Um, I think it's difficult for anybody who is in the service for people that um, it, it can be traumatizing. And so we should have more respect for, and of course there are bad apples. Like that's something that is a given. I was going to say that. It's not to say that apples. it's infallible, but it's almost like in general, just what they do. Like, I don't even know if I have the courage. If... <laughs> To take a life, I know, takes a certain level of just mm -hmm. courage, man. <laughs> like, you got to be like, and I don't mean like unjustly. I mean like to take a life for the right reason or any what you deem to be. Like, you got to like say fuck a lot of stuff. And I don't know if I have that in me. I wouldn't know until put into certain situations. Yeah. Yeah. They they insert themselves into that situation. Yeah. And then they that became their norm. So their reality is so different from the average person. Most people couldn't do what they do, to be honest. No. I, th I really think people do that for a reason. You're, yeah. you're born to really be like a soldier. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I believe that personally, but. Yeah, and then um, as far as uh, other jobs that are well-respected nurses. Um, you're they, born to be a healer. You're born to be a healer. They have a job. Shout out to all my nurse friends. I, hope, I, I, I hope so. I think just like police. You know, you have good nurses. And then, <laughs> I mean, for real, like, there's so many That's people that I've met that, you know, they're like, they're in nursing school. And I, and I, okay, well, what made you want to become a nurse? And they're like, money. You know? Mm -hmm. And there's the thing, like, most people that I've met and asked this question to, they do it because, I mean, that's, you're right, they're natural healers. That's, that's who they are at their core. And I'm like, thank you. Like, that's what a nurse should be. But then some of them actually just want to do it for uh, for the money, and I can't I can't knock them for that. But I feel like with something like that, there should be there should be a certain level of, of honor that yeah. goes into it. Like you should do it for the right reasons, you know. Most people who do jobs like that for the money don't last long because they can't keep up or they don't have the empathy to. to well, I hope to, so. Yeah, I hope so. I will say most of the people that I've met um, in my personal life. You know, friends or exes or whatever, they do it for the right reason. Um, it's, it's a lot of people that I've met just randomly, you know, out and about. They're like, oh, I want to get paid. I want to make money. You know, I'm like, oh. Well, if you want to make money, you could be anything. A pilot, pilots make really good money. That's another job that's super awesome. Pilots? Yeah. Any aviation. I think air traffic controllers are amazing. Like, I think that they have a tough job, and they, I mean, I don't know much about it, but to to control traffic in the air, 30-something 30, 30 or however many feet in the air it is, and they control where planes go and making sure that they don't crash into one another. I can't do that. I'm that's, colorblind. That's but. a lot of, oh, true. Yeah. I did order some new colorblind glasses. They should be here tomorrow. Oh, wow. It's not really relevant to the topic, but I just figured I was <laughs> Facts. But, you know, I heard recently that most pilots don't actually fly. They, just, they put the plane in autopilot, and then they just kind of, I think they, they may, this is what, take off and landing, but pretty much while it's in the air, it's on autopilot, and they're just there in case, you know, shit goes south. I was flying in a plane from um, from St. Thomas to St. Croix, and it was like one of those little planes. And they seat you based on weight, so they ask you what. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> and I was I sat in the very front, by the, I was the co-pilot, so I watched uh, I watched him do his thing and. Sure enough, it's just what you just said. I mean, he, he moved a few knobs, and it seemed like an old plane, too. It was not a new plane at all. Like, <laughs> it seemed like the planes that were just, like, first made. And 
I mean, it was it was a bumpy ride, and they did say that, but uh, it was it was neat. It was because I actually saw from like a pilot's point of view where you look out of the front glass, and very neat. But it was an experience. But yeah, sure enough, he sat there just like the rest of us, just almost there. I, I'll say this as my ending note: um, one of my best friends is a trauma nurse. Mm-hmm. I think there's something to be said when. When you have the ability, when a potential life to be saved or a life to be taken is in your hands, I think the ultimate reality snaps into place. There's nothing more like um, admirable than somebody that can be in those situations and act with efficiency. I respect that. Oh, 100%. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whether I, I might agree with their, their decision or not, I have no idea. I, I don't know what exactly. Yeah, saying. when you that pressure hits, that shit's yeah. real, man. Yeah. Yeah. So utmost respect for them, no doubt. Not now, it is wine time. Hmm. Wine. <laughs> wine All right, so time, y'all. All right. Ready to uh, switch our wines? Cool. Let's do it. Yeah. Check this out, bro. Let me get that. Yeah, I can't pull. Yeah, hold Wait. it. Real hot. Is that mine? Yeah. No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, oh, okay. is, this is me right here. You're good. Oh, yours smells good. It's more in there, girl. Okay. Jen has no tannins. Jen, oh what is this? God. Hold on. This is a spin. Hold on, man. It's kind of weak. It's a here, Rio? Man. Yeah, Rio Ha. Rio Ha. Yeah. Oh, wait. Who do I have? It's mine. Okay. It's not Ooh. me. Oh, wait. No, that's his. That's his. <laughs> yours was really good. Oh, smoky. Hey. Oh, so, so, uh, yeah, yours is pretty good, Jason. I like this. Just, I know. It's yeah. good stuff, dude. Three. You got a three. Yeah. This <laughs> guy, okay. That's your Joseph, right? Mm-hmm. This is a cat. second voyage. It tastes like a... It tastes like a Pinot. In a good way. Mmm, I like this one. Oh, is this your skin? Mmm. I might have to come back to that. That's good. How much you pay for this, man? This one was... It was... I think it was, it was 24 but it was on sale for 18 Well, yours does smell good. Yeah. Yeah, they got you, bro. It's, it's good. A little on the sweet side, but... Oh, really? I didn't say side. The sweet? It's not... No. I'm, I'm normally very, like, susceptible to that. Oh, yours is really good. Woo, I was not expecting that. <laughs> I don't know. Wow, that is definitely unique. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, that took me by surprise. Hold on. Let me try that again. <laughs> I like yours a lot. Oh, heck yeah, man. What is this? The quail oak. Oh, it's a small bottle. I know, right? I can, I can only picture myself drinking this. I mean, not <clears throat> the first place I picture myself drinking this is if we all have like, um, like a, a get together and we're all doing like wine tastings and everyone brought like different wines, or whatever. And you're like, you know, I want to blow their minds. I want to show them like just how you know well versed I am in wine. Damn, this, this is good. This is really good, but very different, and it's. It's unlike almost anything I've ever had before. Yeah, it's different. This is stellar. Yeah, I like this. Okay, good. Yeah. Wow. Do you want to switch? Sure. Is that my... Oh, yeah. My yeah, you, look. I, oh, my <laughs> God. Come on, Jen. We got this. All right. So, real quick. Favorite wine of the night? I'm going to go with yours. Nice. Yeah. Yay. What about, what about you? I like this a lot. All right. KG, this is actually actually I'll get another bottle of this later. I like the can, uh, the uh, quail. It's pretty good. Cool. Yeah. That's all right. Oh yeah. Yeah. Good shit, guys. I'm gonna ask you guys something, right? Okay. In the alternate timeline, what would you do for a career? If I was brave enough, I would be a diver, marine biologist. But I just could not. I just. It's so, you know what? I actually follow a girl on Instagram. Her name's Mermaid Kaylee, and she is a diver in Hawaii, and she dives with absolutely anything that possible, like whales, sharks, stingrays, 
dolphins. I mean, the whole nine yards. And she, that's just all she does. And it's insane. She, she lives the life. And to live in Hawaii, oh my God. So if I, if I could just reinvent myself, I would, I would look like Father Kells on Instagram. I don't know her real name, Who? but you guys don't know Father <laughs> Who? Kells. Right, you want to put it in a little, yeah. little thing right here? <laughs> yeah, right here, Father Kells. If I could look anybody That's like cool. her. And then I would live the life of Mermaid Kaylee. You guys, I'll show her your, or I'll show you. You better, yeah. Her. I'm, I'm, yeah. I want to know. Check it out. So for me, oh man, the only thing I can imagine doing other than what I'm doing now is video games. I would, my dream being a kid growing up, for most of my life, my dream was was to be a video game producer. But this is also like back when, I mean video game production was very different than what it is now. Back then you had, you had these superstars, you know, you had rock stars, I mean, you had, you know, Shigeru Miyamoto, Hideo Kojima, David Jaffe. These guys could put out a game and they said, you know, my game is called Piece of Shit. And people would just be like, yeah, I'm going to pre-order that. I'm going to buy it. There'd be a line out the door waiting to buy it. It, it doesn't matter what they do because they are involved. Because the 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 community, the gamers trusted their their the name behind the product. Man. Who did Metal Gear? Did you just oh, mention like Hideo you, Kojima? Okay, okay. I thought that's I heard I recognize that name. One of the most right. brilliant men ever in the industry to ever fucking do it. And so the thing is, where he he was a, pretty much the last rock star, or technically is still the last rock star. You know, he he would say, "I want to make this game. Give me this much money. Give me this kind of a team. I'm going to make my game, and it's going to be amazing." And they followed his artistic direction, which which is amazing. And when Konami was like, you know what, mm, we're paying you too much. You, too much of our reputation is based on just your name. He was like, all right, you want to see what my name can do? He's like, I'm out. Deuces. And that was a huge upset in the, uh, in the video game communities when he left Konami. I, I'm sorry, I'm, getting, I'm going on a tangent here. But I'm listening. No, I'm, yeah, I, 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 really I'm a gamer now. I get really passionate about it. No, thanks. But really, I would want to produce video games. I've always been an artist, and I feel like... My personal art, what what I think is the greatest art of, of all time, is video games. I think, as far as human emotion and just in involvement, there's no greater engagement in, in art than video games. My little cousin is in school for that right now. It's gonna be a video what school? Developer. RIT Rochester Institute of Technology. Yeah. So the way they used to do it is that you would have your producer, which is like that that is the motherfucker. <laughs> Whatever they want creatively, the team follows. But now, um, to keep costs down, what a lot of producer a lot of uh, publishers do is that they actually hire developers to do a game and hire multiple people in multiple positions and then once that game is done, you have like five or six years and you're gone. They cut you. You know, you can't continue staying in the same company for too long because you'll just, you'll cost them too much money. You'll, you'll require more money. And then if, you're, if you are the producer and your name gets too big, they're going to have to pay you even more, you know, to continue that. The fun fact is that uh, Shigeru Miyamoto, literally like pretty much a father of video games. This guy created Mario, Link, Donkey Kong. I mean, you name it. Back in the... The, reg the original Nintendo days, he, he pioneered most of these games. He finally retired, and Nintendo stock dropped significantly because he just retired. It's, it's that time of his life. So in order to keep their stocks up and to keep money going, Nintendo hired him to do nothing. His job, his, he doesn't have a job, he doesn't do shit. He just gets a check for breathing. And they're like, yo, you were technically an employee yep. of Nintendo. This is how this is how important you are. We just we just pay you to just sit at home and breathe. Oversee shit. Yeah. It's just no different than what's the original Final Fantasy VII, the original games um uh the creator. 
he was on other projects, but it's almost like that. His name in of itself mm. had value. And I realized that. I was like, the game was shitty, but it's like they brought him in. Oh, well, I, you looked at me like I will elaborate. Okay. <laughs> Which Final Fantasy you saw? Hey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love you even more now. That's I know. I was gonna say that's infallible, but in fact, yeah. I'm pretty sure he was. He had a hand in even 13, bro. And I don't get it twisted. I, I still play all of them, and I, I haven't loved for all of them. But now, it, it got to the point where they're clinging on to that that creativity that the the original like was able like Final Fantasy VII was revolutionary, and like yeah. I promise you, to this day, like. I'm currently playing the remake, and I'm just like. Which as soon as they announced, you know, the masters returned. Uh, the guy who did the music for Final Fantasy VII, when they Noble Masu, uh, I'm they, not saying it right, but yes, that's when, they, when they said, "Hey, he's coming back," it's, it's a done deal. So, and I'm sorry. By the way, score good, beautiful. Kind of, kind of got <laughs> but long story short, in a different timeline, I would love to be a video game producer, especially back when it was your individual creativity that could drive an entire game or a whole entire franchise your you could be the George Lucas and James Cameron you know JJ Abrams your name represents everything you could do it now bro that was no- no- the technology no- suggests that I'm sorry I'm sorry that was Nobu Himatsu yeah I'm, I'm sure I'm pronouncing that incorrectly he single-handedly composed the soundtracks for the first nine final fantasy games. I know nah yeah. that man that man's a genius yeah bro. it's for um, real and the tools he had almost no tools Almost no. T- if you look at and what it takes, I know, I know, dude. <laughs> oh, oh, just incredible. So that, that's what I would do in an alternate timeline. What about you? I'd I'd be a boxer, some form of a prize fighter. Really? Yeah. I think there's something about. <laughs> I got a little crazy in me. What you happens a is boxer like uh, like Katie Boat right over here. No, 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 no. I'm gonna tell you something. Do you for real? I'll teach you what's up. All right, put put me on. Yeah. Put me on. Close. <laughs> Katie probably has gloves in the car right now. <laughs> hey, I knew it. <laughs> I've, I've always, since uh, a young and I've always had a lot of energy towards me, and I like to put that. I, I think the ultimate test of any human being is what you do. Like it's flight or fight, and like fucking, I love to like, like even when I spar with my buddies yeah. and like we're like we're playing around. Like I want to do that professionally if I could have. I'm a little yeah. older now, but I promise you, man. Like I think because my brain works really fast. And I've never been not not athletic. Had I really like actually to be honest, boxing preferably, but any sport like I could be a basketball player. I could be a lot of things. I, I like to challenge myself physically, but at the same mm-hmm. time, like my yeah. mind is always working. So I want to know where I could take that. Had I gotten to that early, and I think fighting is the best place where they both meet together. What fighting in sports? Fighting is is where your 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 brain and your and your body meet together. I think there's nothing greater than that. Um. But what you were you're about to say? Uh, um, I was gonna say you kind of just your aesthetic gives me like thoughts of like athlete or even music or something like that. Like you just seem to be like. I just got energy. Yeah, your energy is <laughs> just, just misplaced, man. That's what, actually why I appreciate wine and I so much. Shout out. Sure. Ah. Well, then Katie, didn't you have a did you have a question? I do. Yeah. Uh, maybe a more existential question about jobs and careers. It's a two-parter. How significant are your jobs right now to your lives? And then how significant should a job be to a person's life, do you think? Oh, well, let's break it down. Let's, let's do the first part. One more time. You repeat that and then we'll, we'll answer that one. Yeah, how, how significant are your jobs to your lives now? I... I th- to answer that best I can, I'll tell you what. You need to make money, <laughs> mm-hmm. first and foremost. But I found a lot of solace just in the fact that over time I learned how to appreciate the fact that I am making money rather than real. Like, I do this thing where I'm looking at what am I actually doing versus what I could be doing. But at the end of the day, you have to find some sense of solace in what you are doing, no matter what it is. Yeah. Like. I'm adapt for what I do, to be quite honest, man. Like, I love, I love service industry, but it's like, that's not my, like, that's not the best that I could be doing. But as I got older and I grew to understand, like, I had to learn to appreciate just making a living. For me personally, that is my answer, man. Learn to appreciate making a living. 
Because you're going to, whatever you are, you're going to do that regardless. Whatever you're meant to be, you're going to do the that regardless. The finds a love in what he does. Yeah. Yeah. Essentially, yeah. Jen? Um, I like what I do, too. I'm also in the service industry. Mine's a little different. Mine's actually a little bit more challenging. Um, we actually do things very old school where we don't have a POS system. So we handwrite every word. <laughs> For real? Yeah. Um, we total and tax ourselves. Um, yeah. our, our register looks like the Barbie register that you used to play with as a kid. You turn your own butter? Bye. Uh, well, we actually don't serve food, but... But um, <laughs> <laughs> <Like> you serve. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Keep talking. Yeah, you gotta explain this. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. So, um, no, we don't. We don't hand make our. <laughs> we um, we just we write everything down from every single order. We don't. I mean, we have tickets printed, but. That's just, like I said, from the little, I mean, this thing is so old school, it's hilarious. Uh, but we don't even touch the register, someone does it for us. Like, it's very old school. Like, whereas we prepay for the drinks, we get them, um, then the money gets given back to us based on how much the tab was, stuff like that. So it's just like very, very old school. Yeah, that sounds very... It's difficult. a lot. It's a lot. I mean, to start a tab, it's like, you know, you write down, like, their name, their ID number, <coughs> the card information. <coughs> Oof. Yeah. I'll say that my, with my job, um, I, sh I probably owe it more credit than I give it because <coughs> for me personally, please don't die, KD. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I should probably give it more credit than what, than what I do because have, you know, being a bartender right now, um, among amongst other things, I have several jobs, but my primary job is, is a bartender, and that allows me the freedom to live life the way that I choose to live it. I forgot what was that question again? Yeah, and how significant is it to your life overall? Oh, fuck my job. I don't give a shit about my job, <laughs> but I, I owe it more credit than, than I that I normally give it. Um, it's, it's more important. It, it does handle a lot more weight. It does you know, provide me you know, the ability to, to buy the things that I want to buy, spend the time doing what I want to do. But in a heartbeat, fuck this job. It's, I, 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 I can do this out at any moment. It's not important to me. The fact that all, <laughs> the fact that all three of you work in the service industry do any of you feel like that is a benefit to you and that it kind of works that social muscle? Yeah, yes. absolutely. Yes. It helps you learn how to deal with people, especially for me. Like, I deal with drunk people all day long. So I know people, especially who, like, work there or that are patrons there. I mean, I see them when they're sober. And I see them when they're drunk. And I have to, you know, learn how to deal with all of that while I'm sober. So... It teaches you a lot just about people and about, um, you know, how to how to reflect yourself or reflect on yourself when you're in public and you're a patron at a bar or a club or something like that, and and kind of kind of teaches you how to navigate social settings a yeah. lot better. I mean, we're all three social people. I think that's why we can even have this podcast. But yeah. to answer your question, I think that definitely serves you know a purpose for us to exercise. And flex our social muscles. Yeah. Do you feel like there's ever a point where your job becomes too <clears throat> significant, where it overshadows the living part of your life? That's for y'all, because that's a, that's an instant hell fucking no to me. Like, <laughs> I, just, I will quit. I will quit my. So that concert we're going to. Uh huh. If they didn't give me that day off. We going. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm quitting. Like, straight up, no questions asked. Deuces, I'm out. So, it, my job will never impede my life. And my, my whole philosophy about having a job is that you will always be able to make more money, but you will never be able to make more time. 
So I prioritize my time and my life above my job, no matter what happens. That's a good way to live. Well, thank you. You can, but you can also afford to have that that philosophy, man. There are some people in life that have circumstances that don't allow them to. I, and I just want to state that, not yeah. to say I don't knock that because you your life hasn't set you up to be in a certain position. And that's commendable in of itself. You make very smart decisions, but some people did, and it's like they have responsibilities and priorities that don't allow them to have that same focus of, you know, I don't know, like same I'm perspective. I, I, I literally just missed out on a, on a trip to Jamaica because I said, fuck this job and decided I wasn't going to work for two months. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know. Bills got to pay, all this yeah, shit. Yeah, exactly. I and know. I like, yeah, I'll pay my bills. Yeah, sure, no problem. And I was like, I can't go to Jamaica. And I was like, oh, probably should have thought this through. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, no regrets. No regrets. Never that, no. man. Um, yep. Any no, final thoughts? I'll tell you what. You know what? Just to be a uh, fun fact, in, a, in an ideal world, I would like to be an actor. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Because you know how I speak on energy yeah. and whatnot, but it's almost like they... To be a different character. It's yeah. artistic. There I you go. I can't see you there not you doing go. something artistic. Yeah. yeah. So to be able to tap into a whole nother spirit because that's what they do they channel spirits that oh, shit is yeah. so real i would love to just be like the evil person on a i'm trying to tell you man <laughs> i'm trying to tell you my anger out and <laughs> i'm gonna take it out on you and your character let it off right now like i'm watching i just started a handmaid's sale and there's a lot of evil people on that show and i could play any of them <laughs> personal experience okay for me, I think that um, I think a job should come second. I think jobs and careers, unless you're passionate and that's who you are, a job and career should be a reflection of who you are. Sorry, let me start this over one last time. A career should be a reflection of who you are, and a job should just be a, a means to an end and should not be the most important thing in life. So that's that's personally how I live. That's how. If I ever have offsprings, that's how I would I would try to raise them. <laughs> if you ever have offspring, <laughs> not children, offspring. But yeah, it's the same difference. Like that's. What? <laughs> he, said, he said offsprings. <laughs> that's what they are. God. My progeny. Whatever. My progeny. <laughs> so how about eight? Join us next week. Sunday, 9 p.m., wine at 9. Thank you so much, Katie. Like and subscribe. Yeah. Thank you, Joy, for glowing up in 2021. One final cheer of that. Hey. Hey. Oh, my wine glass is heavy. (laughs) Pour some in here. No, you don't want to mix that. I'll drink what you'll drink. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Tune in next week. We'll see you later. Toodles. (laughs) This nigga said toodles. Toodles from now on.